uh, Al finished with a triple double. Just how valuable is his uh, the well roundedness that he brings? Um, I mean, it's it's big, and and I thought that you know obviously he played in the middle of that zone a lot, and I thought when he did, we were at our best. Um, but he, um, I, I don't think we can overstate his importance to our team. You noted how. You can't really overstate the importance of Al to your team. Yeah. Why have the minutes without him lately gone so poorly for you guys, and what do you need to do to kind of clean those up? It's a really good question. We have to play a lot better without him. Um, you know, I think that some of that stuff might be sample size, but there's enough of a there's enough there that we need him, right? So we do have to figure out a way to clean it up and play better when he's not on the floor. And there's a lot of things that go with that. I mean, he's so good on both ends and. You know, he does everything on the stat sheet. Um, we saw Marcus Smart, <coughs> sorry, uh, on the bike, and then he waited a long time in the fourth quarter. Are those related, or is that a decision in the fourth quarter to put him back in? No, there? I just thought Terry was, had a decent amount of burst there and didn't want to play the three guards together. Um, I did that a little bit, maybe in the first, just for a little stretch. So I decided to stay with Terry for a little bit longer. So unrelated. Good first quarter and kind of just grinded the, the, the last three. Are you more proud of just kind of holding off a team that they have a lot to play for? They weren't going to give up. They weren't going to, you know, pull back or a disappointing. Not not as course? much, um, not as much for that. But Gary, we needed to like have one of these where things were really going against us and we just found a way, right? And unfortunately, we've had two of these against these guys at home. Um, but that's what they do. They keep coming. They're really hard playing. They're really well coached, and and like I said about the zone, I thought we just got stagnant. You know, we 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 showed that we can play great against it, and then we just slowed down a little bit too much. Coach, two out of three games now where Kyrie has put home a pretty big basket off the drive to the basket. Um, what can the team as a whole learn from that, and and how successful that's been to give you guys a couple of really important wins here down the stretch? Uh, you mean the one where he got the blocking foul? Is that what you're, yeah, I mean, it was a big play. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously a huge play when it goes from three to six like that. But he's um, he's one of the best scorers in the league. When he puts on those jets in transition, he's hard to keep from where he wants to go. Just going back to the 2-3 zone, Brad, obviously the Pete and the Nets, they play a lot of it anyway. But just with the playoffs approaching, do you see, like, zone in general is something teams are going to go to Yeah, I think, I mean, teams have done that occasionally in the playoffs. I mean, it just kind of depends on what you like to do and how much, you know, you're comfortable with that, how much you've practiced it, how much you've done it. I mean, these guys have played it all year. Brooklyn's played it all year. Not a lot of teams have played it as much as those two teams. But, you know, certainly this is all great, you know, work and film for that. Um, there's no doubt. We played it at stretches two years ago in the playoffs against Chicago especially, um, but played it a little differently, you know, and I think you just, you want to have little things like that, but at the end of the day, you know, we're going to, you know, most teams are going to be who they are most of the year. 